Okay, welcome back, part two, and the task for this session is to sort out these LEDs. So the LEDs have turned up for final, the IR emitters, uh, SFH4556P, five, five, Osram uh, emitters. Um, task is to put these in some breadboard and just work out the um, resistor value we're going to have to put in series with these to get just the right intensity of light for our webcam. Yeah. A um, bit of a basic 101 on LEDs for those that don't know, you know, they're not like bulbs. You can't just put a, a kind of a wide voltage range into them and adjust the intensity that way. They've got a lower voltage um, limit below which they do absolutely nothing. They won't emit anything. You'll suddenly reach a point where they start to work. And then likewise, there's an upper um, voltage limit beyond which they will start to uh, pop. So the starting point, I suppose, is the data sheet, which we briefly looked at last week. Um, but the key pertinent bits on there um, were the forward voltage listed here. Okay. Um, the top one here is the typical one. Yeah, 1.7 volts typical, 2 volts max. Ignore this one here. Um, this is suggesting 3.6 volts up to no more than 4.6, but that is a surge current spec. So that's one amp for 100 microseconds. You certainly we want to drive these things constantly, so we can't go anywhere near that. Um, the other, the other flip side is we're looking to drive these off USB, which is five volts. Okay. Now, five volts. Um, if each one of these drops 1.7 volts, if that's the the typical forward voltage, then um, we should be just about safe to do that. Obviously, that's 5.1 volts. We're close enough on that, but we want to put a current limiting resistor in line with these, and we probably want to tweak them. Down. We want to be able to vary that intensity, so that's why we're going to go on the breadboard, and we're just going to, you know, have a play around and see exactly what voltage works best with this camera. Let's not just go sticking 1.7 volts in and assuming that that's the best because it's the 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 most. Um, so, okay, uh, I'm going to go over to the other end of the desk, the uh, workbench, and um, rig these up in some breadboard, and then we'll start having to play around with what we want to put through them. Okay, we're over on the workbench end of my desk. Um, excuse the mess. Uh, what we've got rigged up, we've got our PSI cam here. It's rigged up to the PC down the other end of the room, but it's kind of an indicative distance away from our little breadboard of IR transmitters here. Uh, I can see on the screen down there, I'll capture that, uh, the, the video output from this camera, so we can look at that and monitor what the, um, the, the, the intensity of the light is like. Um, here then, I have got I've got all three emitters in here at the moment. Let me just get you a closer look up at this. So we've got all three emitters in, but at the moment I've just got one wired up. Um, and what we've got is we've got it rigged up to a bench power supply here. Um, you don't need a bench supply. I'm just using it for ease, really. I can configure the voltage on this and adjust it uh, on the fly. But, you know, if you've got a 5 volt supply, you can always use, and what I've done is I've rigged one up just to show you, uh, a variable resistor here, a potentiometer, uh, which we can use to adjust the voltage going into uh, the um, the uh, emitters. So I've rigged this up. I don't technically need this because I can adjust the voltage here, but just to show you what we're doing. So supply out into the uh, breadboard. That's going through the uh, variable resistor of some sort um, into our IR emitter and then to ground. Um, one little trick on these IR emitters be cautious of the the anode is um, they threw me a bit of a curveball here the anode on these is the shorter pin and that's not really convention normally it's the longer pin so um, so do be conscious that of these the, uh, the positive needs to go into the shorter pin and negative is the longer the cathode okay so in there they're gonna go okay so I can see down there uh, they see the camera footage right Bench supply, we've got, uh, it's set at the amount of 0.3 volts, which is not going to be enough probably to drive this. This is um, a, like a safety limit. This is a 50 milliamp um, current limit. You can see we can put over current protection on here. Um, that will just stop us pushing more than 50 milliamps into the circuit, just a bit of a safety thing really. Uh, right, so I'm going to start at 0.3. We're going to turn the output on. There we go. 
and we should see nothing there now. And you can see no currents being drawn, the, the power supply is not detecting any current going into the circuit. So we will now step the voltage up and watch our camera footage until we start seeing some output. So we're at 1 volt there, 1.2, 1 1.3, 1, ah there we go, 1. Point, I can just start seeing it at 1.3 but it's not very bright. Uh, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, 6, 7, 1.8 yeah, and it's starting to, you can see there, look, it's starting to glare at 1.8. If I move this around a bit, see that, that, it's not a nice defined dot anymore, it's kind of glaring a bit too much. So, let's back that down. 1 1.7, 1.6, yeah. 1.5 to 1 1.4. 1 1.4, I'm liking, yeah. Just fiddling around, so there, I like that, that's 1.4 volts. And that, let me just get up and have a nice close look at the screen. <coughs> yeah, I like that, that's a nice defined dot, it's not glaring. If I just move that around a little bit, oh I've got a bad, that's a bit of a bad connection somewhere there I think, oh, no. yeah. This is only in breadboard, so uh, yeah, okay. 1.4 is feeling good to me. So, next step then is let's just wire it with all three in and test that. So now we have got all three of them rigged up. I've pulled out the uh, potentiometer for now. Um, so we've got all three rigged up in series. So let's give that a try. So, if I turn that supply on now, at 1.4 volts, obviously not really going to see anything, but a bit of maths, you know, just triple that up, we should get up to, what are we, 1.4, 2.8, 3.8, 4.2 about, 4.2 volts, so let's uh, adjust the voltage, crank that up, 3.6, 3.7, here they come in there, they're, so they're coming in at just 3.8, 3.7, but we want to go about 4.2 we reckon. There's 4.2, and that looks, the flickering is a, just the connection in the breadboard I think. Yeah, if I move it carefully they're fine. <clears throat> that's looking pretty nice so just a quick note here then we're at 4.3 volts and we're drawing about point drawing about six milliamps which is nothing so I don't even know why we're worrying about sticking a PTC in it but um but uh, my, my PTC might be a bit over spec for this but okay uh, let's now go and do some maths then uh, and work out what resistor we need to put in line with these so that if we're putting 5 volts in we drop 0.7 of a volt over the resistor before we hit the first LED basically. Okay so a little bit of basic Ohm's law then will help us get that resistor value that we need. If you can take your mind back to your GCSEs you remember voltage is current times resistance yeah V equals IR. We're interested in resistance though so we're going to spin that around R is V over I voltage over current the voltage, we've got 5 volts, um, USB standard spec is 5 volts. We need to take away the 4.3 volts though that we're consuming through the IR LEDs. Okay, um, and we need to put that over uh, the current which we saw was 6 milliamps. Um, so that's 0 0.006 amps, remember we need to work in amps here. Um, so 0 0.7 over 0 0.006 and you work that out, you've got 116 ohms. So there's our ideal resistor value. Um, at these kind of numbers, it doesn't really matter, we don't have to get bang on 116. So I'm going to go for a 100 ohm resistor. I'm going to err on the side of being a little bit brighter. Uh, we're going to go for a 100 ohm resistor. Give that a try. So we're just going to go back to the breadboard, put that 100 ohm resistor in, take out the variable resistor, 
Um, and then we're going to put 5 volts into the entire circuit and we should be on the money. We should have that 3 point model exactly how we saw it. Yeah, let's just go and check that. Okay, so we are just going to test this now, finally in breadboard, just test the theory. We have got our 100 ohm resistor in here uh, and then feeding from that into the uh, series of emitters. So we just need to run 5 volts into this and that should be spot on. We're at 4.3 at the moment, let's turn that on. You can see there's a very faint output there. But I'm going to crank this up to 5. There's 5 volts. Let's check our image. Yeah, looks good. A little bit hazy, maybe. Back that down a bit. That's no, not too bad. That's fine. Okay, I think our 100 ohm resistor is going to work fine. That's it, we've worked out what we need. 5 volts, one 100 ohm, quarter watt um, resistor, through our three um, emitters should give us a pattern just like that puppy right there. That's it now, just got to build it.